This is my first video about my new to me Miata. I've actually had this Miata for about three years. And uh, this first video is just going to be changing the battery. And you say, how difficult could it be to change a battery? Well, in the case of the Miata, it's a little more difficult than you might assume. So, first things first, the Miata's uh, battery is in the trunk. And for those who are really interested in the, the specifics, um, Mazda specifies out of the factory a, an uh, absorbed glass mat or AGM battery. Now, for clarity, this battery, the Westco, is one such battery that's uh, known to be uh, an AGM battery, and you can find those online. I was doing some research uh, in preparation for this earlier today, uh, in 2017, and uh, some of the candidates that I found were, uh, some people talked about uh, an AutoZone battery. No, oh, don't get that one. Um, it's I, When I called the AutoZone, they were talking about a flat top. What I was looking for specifically is this kind of hump in the middle here. And you'll notice that this Duracell is the same way. Okay. Now the other side of it is it has these vent tubes. So one here and one here. And those connect down in there. I'll get to that in a second. Aside from online, with the uh, Westco battery, I discovered uh, that uh, O'Reilly seems to have the right part. I had called them and they said that theirs, theirs had the, the correct hump. And uh, this, this one that I've opted for, the Duracell, is um, from Batteries Plus. So those are a couple of uh, local options if you find that your battery is dead one morning. Now before you put the grease on, you'll want to clean off the terminals. The, this actually recommends a Permatex uh, battery cleaner. I would say probably just wipe it off, um, you know, or use a brake cleaner or whatever you want to do, but you want the terminals to be pretty clean before you put that dielectric grease on. Now I'm going to use this old battery to uh, demonstrate something that, you know, maybe some people take for granted and some people don't. But I have, happen to have some dielectric grease left over from uh, <laughs> my Trans Am, which was, wow, it's been a while now. But uh, one such recommendation is they talk about going ahead and putting dielectric grease on the terminals of your, of your new battery. So I went ahead and did that on the Duracell, but I was, gonna, I was like, oh, I should document this. So what I'm using is I'm using gloves because it says don't get it on your fingers. Now, some people probably won't care. Just use your fingers or whatever. And then I'm just putting, putting that grease fairly liberally, spread it around on the terminal, covering all areas of the contacts. I've already done that on the Duracell battery. This is my old battery. So we're just going to kind of rub it on. You can actually see, well, <laughs> aside from the overexposure, you can kind of see that uh, the finger is already a little glossy from that activity. Now the Miata loves 10 millimeter sockets. And so that's what we're going to do is we use the 10 millimeter socket to remove the uh, nut here, the nut down in there which is the negative terminal. And that's something else to keep in mind too, is some of these batteries will have the positive and negatives reversed. This one has it correct. Remove the, remove the nut on the negative terminal, nut on the positive terminal. And then for the Miata, there's a battery holder right here. You'll remove that one with the same 10 millimeter. And here are the vent hoses. This one's gonna go on the positive side. skipped ahead here and went ahead and removed the battery and here's why because even though I had my new battery incorrectly the battery holder for the Miata which prevents it from flying around in hard cornering needs to pop in like so so that will need to go in <laughs> before you attempt any battery stuff difficult one-handed. So I've got the battery tray, or uh, the battery kind of somewhat in the battery tray. There we go. And then the bracket is going to go right around it. Like so. 
something I want to point out is for this battery in particular, we have, if you noticed on the West Co, there were some, oh, I'll show that in a second, I guess. But this uh, battery holder actually fits right in this slot, so it's not going anywhere. On the West Co, the same slot is right here. And here's the reason I'm making this video, actually, is I determined, I was like, ah, I forgot to put this in, so I put the battery in, and then the battery being in the tray, I couldn't get the, the bracket in. So here's how it goes. Bracket in, and then put the positive on. That's the whole reason for this video. Save yourself some headache and learn from me. So we have our lovely holder. It's gonna fit into here. And up through our bracket. Ah, left-handed. There you go, right-handed. And there's gonna be a 10 millimeter nut goes on top. Something to keep in mind is that this doesn't have to be super tight either. It should be tight, but because it's pulling down on the bracket here, and up on the hook. It doesn't have to be incredibly tight, but just so it doesn't move, which I'm actually shaking the whole car by doing that. So that must be sturdy enough. So we connect the vent tubes. This is a little bit so I can slide it right on. There are no hose clamps or anything, they just slide right on. It's nicely down here, so in case anybody's wondering what that looks like. Now we're gonna do the positive. Now this doesn't have to be incredibly tight, but just a little bit snug. Make sure that it's not going anywhere. 